Over here, we will discuss what is money. Now you might find even this question to be very weird. Like why am I asking you what is money? Because you have seen money since you have grown up and you use money every day in order to make purchases. But have you ever thought about that? How can you make purchases using this piece of paper? What is so special about the, this piece of paper that uh, everybody is willing to accept this and they give you the thing that you require so if you want to purchase a mobile phone you just show them these rupees and you get a mobile phone in order to understand that you need to differentiate between commodity and fiat monies commodity monies are items that are used as money but they have an intrinsic value in some other use so the good itself has its own value for example gold gold in itself has its own value and it can be also used to exchange or to purchase something else similarly you have cigarettes in prison usually in prisons if you want to purchase something cigarettes are used for that purpose but one of the problem with commodity money is that its value depends upon whether other people have the same value for it or not for example if nobody in that prison smokes if uh, nobody is interested in, interested in smoking, then automatically cigarette will no longer work as a trade to purchase other goods. Similarly, if nobody is interested in gold, they do not want to make any jewelry out of it, or they just don't like the color of it, it has no demand, then automatically this cannot be used for trading because nobody will be willing to purchase it. So it will no longer be a medium of exchange. what we are using these days is actually fiat money fiat money are those items that are intrinsically worthless so basically this piece of paper has no other use instead of being a medium of exchange so uh, it has no value uh, on its own if you just think that it's a piece of paper which is blue green red in color which has different colors so then the question is that why would anyone accept worthless worthless scraps of paper if you have answered this question by saying that because these worthless pieces of paper are actually backed by gold and silver your answer is incorrect these pieces of paper are not backed by gold and silver so there is actually nothing backing it at all so then how does it have value that is the question that if nothing is backing it then how does it have enough value that everyone accepts it the answer is that your government has taken the steps in order to ensure that the currency will be used for trading purposes and they have done this by declaring it as a legal tender that is it declares that its money be accepted in settlement of debts because your government has declared this money is accepted as a medium of exchange and see even over here in every currency it is written that mutalwe per ada so it means that it is used in in order to settle debts but if you go to the central bank and you give this 1000 rupees and you ask for gold or silver they are not going to give you anything they will give you a lot of 100 rupees note in exchange for this but that is it or a lot of 50 rupees note now the government also has to make sure that they do not debase their currency because if they debase their currency, debasement means that if they print too much money, this money is going to lose its value. And this has happened in some countries that they have uh, printed too much money too fast. Because of that, they have expanded the supply of money too quickly and money actually lost its value. This happened in Zimbabwe. Uh, in 2007, they faced uh, some public water system issues and the president over there said that where money for projects cannot be found, we will print it.
there are three functions of money. Number one, medium of exchange, store of value, and lastly, unit of account. Now, medium of exchange means that sellers generally accept and buyers generally use uh, money to pay for goods and services. Now, suppose if there was no money, in that case, you would have to resort to a barter system in order to make trade. So now imagine that you want to buy eggs for breakfast. You will have to find somebody who has eggs and then you would have to trade with them something that they would want. That means that that would require double coincidence of wants. And that is how people used to trade. But now because money is available, everybody knows that money can be used to purchase whatever they want. It is easily used as a medium of exchange. Okay, so now we're going to discuss store of value. So an asset that can be used to transport purchasing power from one time period to another means that that has store of value. So because of money, you can uh, store it as surplus earnings in a bank account. You can use it to purchase other type of investments and so on. But the main disadvantage for this point is inflation. The store of values uh, is going to decrease as inflation keeps on increasing. And if the country has hyperinflation, then they will see that the value decreases very quickly and very significantly. Then you have the last property, which is unit of account. It means that a standard unit that provides a consistent way of quoting prices. So you can uh, easily uh, put any cost on anything. So you can have something for five rupees, 100 rupees, 105 rupees. Now we have already discussed three functions of money, which were number one was uh, the medium of exchange, second was unit of account, and third was store of value. Now these three characteristics can actually be applied to many other assets if you think about it. So then how can you define something to be money or not? For that, uh, economists have actually given different names to different measures of money. So there are two broad uh, definitions that are used. Number one is M1 and the other is M2. M1 is also called narrow money and transaction money. It is a money that is usually uh, used for transactions and it includes the currency held outside banks, the demand deposits, the traveler's checks and other checkable deposits. So this is basically money that is as good as cash because it can be very easily withdrawn and used for transaction purposes. Then you have M2, which is also called your broad money. This is basically that cannot that easily be converted into cash. So it will take some time, but still it is quite liquid, uh, liquid and it includes uh, basically your short term securities. So it's going to include your savings account, the money market accounts and other near monies. And you added that in your M1. So it includes narrow money plus any other amount available in liquid assets that can be easily converted into cash.